Good afternoon. My name is Pedro Russo, and I'm an astronomer at Leiden University in the Netherlands. Today, I would like to take you on a journey, a journey through space, but also a journey from imagination to knowledge using technology. When we look at the night sky, we see stars, we see some planets, but that is just a tiny bit of the whole universe. The rest is really up to our imagination, is really up to technology that we use to understand better the universe where we live. This is a video showing real data from the universe that we know at the moment. We start on the Earth and we're going to go travel all the way to the edge of the universe. Now we see the solar system and soon you'll see that this, the Sun, our star, is only one out of the many stars that exist in the universe. Now we look at our galaxy and now all the dots are just galaxies. This is really a fast, very fast journey through the whole known universe that we have. But let me go slowly and show you some of these exciting things that we know about our universe. This is a galaxy. It's very similar to our own galaxy, the Milky Way. All the bright dots that you see there are stars. The American astronomer and science communicator Carl Sagan used to say that there are more stars in the universe than grains of sand in the deserts of the whole planet. That's an incredible number of stars. Now imagine that around many of these stars, there are exoplanets. And this is something that we just found less than 20 years ago. Planets around stars that are not the sun. We know almost two thousands of those. And now imagine every single grain of sand on all the deserts around the world, they have these small worlds orbiting these stars. And who knows, some of these planets, these exoplanets, they might have life, who knows? But at the moment, the only planet that we know with, that can harbor life is our own planet, the planet Earth. Astronomy as a science yes, this is a powerful tool to captivate people's imagination and is really rooted to our deep questions for all civilization. What's the origin of the universe, the origin of life, the fate of the, uh, the world where we live? But astronomy also pushes the limits of the technology. We build large telescopes, like the ELT, the extremely large telescope that we are building now in Chile, a quite big telescope. It's really pushing the limits of technology and we'll soon we'll be able to observe some of these exoplanets and maybe find life. We also build big radio telescopes. We also put space telescopes. We put some satellites in space to observe our own universe. But many of the technology that we developed in astronomy, after some time, will come to our da daily lives. This is a good example. This is the personal computer, one of the first personal computers that the most of the hardware and even the software was initially developed for the Apollo moon landing program from NASA. Of course, the GPS satellites, all the navigation system that we all now use, are built on very basic physics, the theory of relativity from Albert Einstein. Some of the software that we use now to understand the galaxies, our own galaxy, is then used to look inside our brain and help to identify very early stages of tumors. Another good example are the CCD cameras. We all have now a CCD camera in our pockets. Most of us even who have two on every single mobile are these digital cameras that were initially developed to image the universe, the universe that we can observe. So astronomy is a science that pushes the limits of research, the technology, but above all pushes really the limits of our imagination, of our creativity. And that's why it's so appealing for the public, so appealing for the children. We manage to attract huge crowds to observe through our telescopes, to our planetarium shows, and to our exhibitions. Those are really the ingredients of our project, Universe Awareness, an educational project for very young children, between four and 10 years old, that is really using the perspective and the inspiration of astronomy to introduce these young children to science, technology, but also hope that giving the perspective of the whole universe, we can open their minds, broaden their horizons, and also stimulate world citizenship. These are the basic ingredients of our program. 
How do we do it? We built an international network of people that share the same mission and vision of using astronomy as a tool for education and development. We develop educational resources. We empower the teachers through teachers' training. And of course, we also try to evaluate the impact that we have on the teachers and on the students. So our program is now active in more than 57 countries. We have active projects in very rural areas, in very cosmopolitan cities, and we are really trying to bring people together. We're really trying to use astronomy in education in the classrooms. We also develop educational resources like the Earth Ball, this ball here, that one thing that we realize when we enter the classrooms is that the children see the planet as a political globe and not as we see the Earth from space, without borders. There's no borders when we see the Earth from space. And that's a powerful thought. That should be the first thing that the children should see in the classroom, not the political globe. And then, yes, we need to introduce the borders, the countries, because they also play a role in our society. All our resources are open source. And uh, like another example is this universe in a box. It's a very low-cost educational kit that we put together for the classrooms, where the teachers, the educators can just start and doing activities using those resources. This is an example of the materials that we produce. And when we use these resources in Germany, in Colombia, in Wales, in India, they always have one thing in common, is the smiles and the engagement of the children, and also the teachers. They really enjoy participating and learning more about the universe and about the cosmos where we live. So it's really our mission to try to captivate all these thoughts in the children's minds. And uh, I'd like to invite you all to be part of this journey and to inspire every child with our wonderful universe. Thank you. Thank you.